Mmm. Love it. Ah. Oh. References. Pet Shop Boys reference. Take on me reference. Strongly referential. But even the way he's singing sounds like a reference. Unafraid to reference or not reference. Hello. Welcome to this video. My name's Dan, aka Lucid. I'm a singer, songwriter, music producer person. And today I'm going to be reacting to Conan Gray's brand new album. This is Found Heaven. Let's go. Cool. Right. Conan Gray. I love a bit of Conan Gray. Loved the first album. The second album, there were like a bunch of highlights, but then I felt like the album didn't kind of come together. And now leading up to this one, I've heard a couple of songs, but not all of them. I've kind of been saving myself so that I can react to like most of them fresh because actually I feel like a lot of the reason why like Super 8 in the end didn't stick with me was kind of because kind of put out like half the album before it came out. And so when the full album came out, I kind of felt like, like a lot of the best songs had I already knew really well. Yes, so I haven't listened to much of the of the pre-release stuff this time. I did hear, I have heard Never Ending Story when that came out that was on repeat in my playlist last summer. And so I'm expecting like 80s homage. But yes, I do love myself a bit of Conan Gray. Um, so I'm very excited to see what he's got in store for us. I'm fresh off, the, well, no, I'm still on the Beyonce train. If you haven't checked out my Cowboy Car reaction, it's up. I think it's probably like one of my best reaction videos. Yeah. I'm really happy with how that one came out. So make sure to check out that. If you are new to the channel, hi, make sure to ke check out my reactions to Kid Crow and Sue Break. I'll leave links for you and make sure to subscribe to reactions to all this good stuff. I've also reacted to people like Chapel Roan, Olivia Rodrigo, people also produced by Dan Nigro. Is that how you say his name? If you want to check out this reaction with absolutely no cuts in any of the songs or anything, listen to, this, listen to the album as I listen to it, then you can check out the unedited version over on Patreon. And if you want to check out more from me, if you like what I've chatted about, then I also have a podcast. It's called Criminally Underrated, where every episode, the guest brings three underrated songs from their favourite artists and we battle it out and decide which ones are criminally underrated. The link is in the description for all my bits and bobs. Um, I've also got new music coming out. If you heard the song in the intro, that is my new song that's coming out on the 30th of April. So make sure to pre-save that via the link. I guess. <laughs> I haven't actually shared the pre-save link yet. Lol. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's go on to the first song. This is Found Heaven. Ooh. More like Sanctus Sanctus Dominus than I was expecting. <laughs> nice. It's giving me 80s horror movie. Cool. Ugh. Okay. Parental expectations. Love the drama in this. Oh. Like the imagery, like the being scared within this kind of midst of this kind of horror soundtrack vibe, you know? Cool. Ah, I love how that goes all major as soon as he says you found heaven. It's like finding heaven, like an oasis of like happiness, of like positivity within the kind of darkness, you know? Yeah. Is it weird to say that it's giving me Van Helsing vibes? I know it's not an 80s movie, but <laughs> that's probably movies that that movie is referencing that I ever seen. <laughs> mm. I kind of like the hushed tones that he's singing in. You know, considering the music is so big, for him to kind of have this kind of hushed tone is quite an interesting kind of comparison. Cool. I feel like, like it's not as catchy as like, what was it? Never ending story. But I did enjoy the vibes and I feel like it sets up the kind of 80s homage right away with that kind of wow bass guitar, synths, the like toyed with vocals and stuff. It's also kind of giving, yeah, like giving me like movie vibes, cinematic energy. But yeah, I really liked the way that the music was kind of painting the lyrics. Most of the song kind of feels quite heavy and minor. But then in that moment where he says, we found heaven, it's like just lightens up. It becomes a major chord and the whole production kind of lightens up. There's like less bass and less dirtiness. It just kind of lightens up. So it's, yeah, it really kind of paints that idea of finding 
an oasis and finding happiness even in a dark kind of time or a difficult situation. No God above us, can we repent this sin? No soul is innocent, everybody wants to love. Oh, that was the like, ga, 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 ga thing at the beginning, isn't it? Um, <laughs> obviously I'm referencing Gaga, you know me. I've literally got a Gaga top on right now. What's up, but Anyway, you walk alone in the into the darkest night. You'll never sleep until you're satisfied. You need love. You need one. You need him. You'll never get your mama's wedding ring. Father always said you ruined everything, but you prayed, begged and prayed. Heart unchanged. It's really giving me queer love song energy because it's like conservative parents who are who are kind of like don't agree with the way you live your life, but you kind of you have to kind of go along because that's what you feel inside, you know? And like the metaphor being that it's kind of this werewolfy thing where it's like heading out into the night almost like your parents shame about your sexuality and your expression um makes you feel like a monster that's really what i'm getting from this imagery you know yeah that's really powerful shit i really like that don't be scared little child you're no demon there's a god in the sky don't believe him lol don't be scared little child of that feeling you're in love you found heaven oh god it really is giving me queer little kid Conan looking at this queer kid and saying, doesn't matter what your parents say, you are not a monster. You know, that's really the energy of this song. You found love, you fell in love in a queer way and you found heaven. And it's like the shame is like heavy over the rest of the song. But in that little moment where he's like, you found heaven, there's brightness and light. And it's that that purity of love that comes from this queer romance. I just... That's beautiful. So nicely done. Like I really love the kind of imagery and the picture and the and the and it's linking into the kind of 80s movie cinematic references. So good. That's really clever. Mm-mm-mm. Let's go on to the next one. This is Never Ending Song, which is the only one I've had. The reference the reference here is obviously Take On Me, right? I think when I first heard it, I was a little bit critical of it, but now I get it. You know, also it's like my boyfriend's favorite song. He adores this song. He has it like on repeat. And now he's got his brother into it and his brother's addicted to it too. <laughs> the <vein. laughs> I don't know what the lyrics are. And it goes on and on and on like a never ending song. On and on. And you and I. And I. <laughs> it's just so chick a song. <laughs> the thing is, is that obviously the reference is very strong, but the song itself holds up. It's strong enough to hold up the reference, you know? And it goes on and on and on. Also, really fun to have a low chorus. Ending song. Yeah, that's just such a good song. The thing is, right, that obviously the whole concept of this album is this kind of 80s reference. Seems to be like very strongly based on interpolation, right? For those who don't know that term, basically it's like a new term, like a relatively new term that people have coined for when an artist takes a song and flips it and makes their own version that is strongly referential to the original. Like, think about that David Guetta one and BB Rexa, which I hate, by the way. Um, <laughs> the blue Abba Dee Baba Die, stuff like that, where it's like so close to the original, but flips it. I feel like Conan's seeing what other people are doing and thinking, actually, I'm going to one up them. I'm going to take that idea and turn it into a full kind of concept album and make all the different songs kind of little references to other songs, but like in a more kind of cohesive, a more artistic kind of reference, you know? When I first heard Never Ending Song, I was a little bit critical because I was like, this is an obvious Take On Me reference. And I was a bit like, nah. But then I was like, actually, I love this song. This is a great song. I'm really enjoying it. And now kind of seeing like the context of what he's doing with the whole thing, I'm like, oh, there's actually something really clever going on here. I think it's quite a cool thing. I don't think I've ever seen anyone quite do that. Obviously, we have Beyonce with Renaissance using samples, blowing them up to 100 and making new things out of those samples. It's kind of giving me a shade of that for Conan, but in a different kind of place. It's not like the Blue Abba Dee Baba Die one, where it's literally just the same one with different lyrics. It's like strongly referential, but has its own flavour and has its own virtuosity in terms of the songwriting, you know? Yeah. So it's it's cool. I really like where his brain's gone with this concept, you know. 
Speaking of that, here's the next song, Fainted Love. <laughs> which is obviously very close to Tainted Love. I'm aware that a lot of people watching this might be quite young, so it might not be quite as obvious to them. But <laughs> I mean, I am a 90s kid, but the 80s music its really, really persisted throughout my life. So, but yes, this is Fainted Love. Fainted Love. This is giving me Radio Gaga energy. Nice. Oh, I love that. Night. Calm down, I'll be there by the nine. Don't mean that you're marrying me tonight. Mm. Cool. I'm the worst if you want it. When you nice. Nice. <laughs> so funny that he is called Fainted Love, so it sounds like Tainted Love, but the reference is clearly Radio Gaga. It's so it's, that's clever. That's clever. Who knows what he's doing here? I'm the worst if you want it. I love that. Using the filter to kind of like give this tension building and then opening up into a bright chorus is so satisfying. It really gives you that kind of 80s movie kind of vibe, you know? What? I don't even know what Fainted Love means. <laughs> so funny. Kiss me till I must believe tonight. But when your heart aches and it's dead in the Oh, I love that. Oh. Oh, your fainted love, that's enough. It's almost like a faded kind of not real thing. It's like, uh, that's enough for me, you know? Oh, so sad. Love it. Oh, I loved that. That was really good. And like, I really loved the interplay between his vocal and the synth. There were bits where he's kind of singing and then the, and then the synth kind of has a call and response moment and then it all comes in on that thing. It's like really satisfying. Definitely refer, it's got to be referring to Radio Gaga. I'm sure there's loads of different references because that seems to be what the whole thing is built on. It's built on reference upon reference upon reference, toying with our idea of what is 80s. And if he's keying into like a version of 80s that is so like the movie version of the 80s, it's like Stranger Things season three, where they're all at the mall. It's like Back to the Future, that kind of like primary colour in your face, kind of not necessarily what the 80s actually was but almost like what cinema has now told us the 80s is like so it's this kind of cinematic it's more of a cinematic reference for me okay next song this is lonely dancers i feel like i've heard clips of this online but i haven't actually heard the full song so let's go now this is the proper 80s vibe isn't it <laughs> oh it's like safety dance right that's the reference I love it. Dance with me so we don't cry. The way, even the way he's singing sounds like a reference. He's nailed. It's this feeling of, have I heard this before? No, it is new, but it's so referential that it kind of has that feeling of recognition. It's really cool. <laughs> I love Conan's Little Singers. Nice. It's almost like this section is almost like a sample, but it's not. Because it, he sings this section so similarly to the original song, Safety Dance, you know. I love just the brightness and the beauty of this, like... Love it. This song really, really does thread the needle so brilliantly. It's a clear reference. It's so close that you kind of almost think that you've heard the song before, even though you haven't heard it, which is very good, because that kind of makes the listeners kind of have this kind of connection to it immediately. But it's strong enough to hold on, it holds its own. Like the songwriting is good enough that it kind of holds up in its own right. We're lonely dancers, join me for the night. We're lonely dancers, baby, dance with me so we don't cry. I love that. He knows how to do the, the relatable lyrics, you know. Your lover left you, broke up tonight. My lover's busy kissing other guys. <laughs> That's so sad. We're both alone now, tears in our eyes. I know the perfect way to waste our time. This is giving me like queer person and their best friend kind of energy it reminds me of me and my bestie Claire where it's like we're both now happy in relationships but when we weren't it was like we'd go out we'd go to Swiftigeddon we'd go to like club nights and stuff and we would just like 
both be pissed off about our relationship situation, but we just dance together. And it's like, that's the vibe I'm getting. It's like besties, you know. Let's go on to the next one. This is Ali Rose. I picked you up from the corner store. So much you changed. Lovely. I love the melody. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, great. Okay. Oh, it's giving me proper Elton John vibes. I'm really into that. Tempo change. Oh, classic code and grey. Desperate one-sided love stories. I always feel it. <laughs> I love all the fun tempo changes. It's really good. I'm really enjoying him doing like a power ballad moment. It's really cool. Ah, great. Oh my God, the slightly slowing down of the tempo is just so mm, gorgeous. I love that. Oh, Conan. Uh, I mean, I love Conan's ballads. Astronomy is probably my favorite Conan Gray song. So, yeah. It's really cool hearing it in this kind of 80s power ballad mode, though. Where'd you go? Leaving on open chord, not resolving it. Yeah. Like, oh, I just love a Conan Gray ballad. He just, like, has something in his voice, something in his performance, something in his lyrics that really just go, mm you know, and like, you know, I love it. This one in particular was reminding me of like Yellow Brick Road, Elton Johnny kind of power ballady kind of moment, big layered vocals and brilliant storytelling. And yeah, it feels like his kind of previous ballads, but kind of blown up to like kind of cinemascope. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's got that kind of vibe to it, you know? I picked you up from the corner store. Your eyes were red and your lips were torn. You wrapped your fingers around my neck, pulled me into your desperate breath. The way you kissed me hot and fast, I knew it'd be the last. Don't leave me hanging alone. Don't leave me hanging alone again. Oh, where'd you go, go, Ali Rose? Who is Ali Rose? I waited all year at your feet. Like, maybe you'd love me. He just does, like, the yearning for another person thing so well, like in Heather, which is probably his most popular song, right? I don't care if it makes me sound insane. I ran my fingers through your hair and I thank God to touch the flame. Wow. He's, like, been so totally obsessed with this person and it's not ever kind of been coming back. And, like, he's kind of in it and just, like, lost in it. Yeah. Sad, but really powerful stuff. Yeah, I think especially the, the touch of genius in that is all the different tempo shifts and time signature shifts and stuff because it really, like, emphasises the emotion, almost like in a classical way. You know, like how in, like, classical music, it will kind of, like, slow down just before the resolution to kind of give it that extra bit of poignancy. Like, he does that so much in this song, and I really like that. It gives it so much style. Let's go on to the next one. This is The Final Fight, which is a reference to an 80s video game. <laughs> so he's really playing with all the 80s references, not just the music, not just the cinema, but video games too. I'm waiting for him to sample Super Mario. <laughs> that would kill me. I'd love that. Sounds like a video game soundtrack already, doesn't it? Now it sounds like one of those classic, like, thingamajigs, like 16 Candles movies or something. Ah, love it. Tried to bite back, but I couldn't. I just stood and cried. The love that died. Yeah. Oh, love it. Oh. Mm. There's nothing left to do but finally tell you what you put me through. I got a bit of distance. Saw the New York lights. Mm. Love it. Oh, this chorus is so sick. Oh. Like going on to this chord. This one. Oh. get it now oh what a clever idea to take the name of the game final fight but turning it into the final like fight between us so i can actually tell you the truth of what the fuck you did to me oh, but i never got it never got my closure oh so good 
<laughs> this is so good. I'm obsessed. Conan, I feel like he's really stepped it up. I feel like on the last album, though, I was critical of like how it felt like the topic was still about the same thing. And so before this album started coming out and stuff, I was thinking I kind of want him to maybe have experienced more actual love. <laughs> Bless him. So that he can write about new stuff. His songwriting has always been really clever, really quirky, really emotional, really poignant. But now he's kind of lending those those aspects and writing songs that, yeah, they still have the same similar themes to what he's been writing the whole time. But, you know, conceptually and the production, all of that layered stuff is so, so cool and so brilliant and is kind of the kind of next step in his artistry that I feel like I needed. You know, I didn't know I needed it, but now I know. <laughs> yeah. And that was so beautifully written. And what a clever idea to like take the game Final Fight 80s like game reference and write a song about wanting to have a final argument with someone so you can finally tell them the truth of how you feel, you know, so good. I didn't fight the feeling running through my eyes. I wanted you to see it. I believed your lies, tried to bite back, but I couldn't. I just stood and cried for the lost time, for the hurting, for the love that died. But all I wanted was the final fight and all I needed was to make it right. Tonight, there is nothing left to do, but finally tell you what you put me through tonight. I made a whole new life, got a bit distant, saw the New York lights. Then I came right back after growing, yet you're still the same. There was me who may be broken. There was you to blame. He was heartbroken, but now he's kind of gone away and gotten some perspective gone back to his hometown he's realized how he's changed and this other person has not and so he's like that perspective has helped him to grow but i don't know whether he ever does actually have the final fight that moment where he can actually tell him the truth and i think maybe conan's gonna have to learn that he's not necessarily gonna always get the closure that he desperately wants you know yeah gorgeous love it cool next song this is miss you oh wait what's this song what's the reference here is it wrong Oh, it's very Pet Shop Boys, isn't it? You know I'm a man. Love it. What a groove. Back like a rubber band. The fear of my feelings. Nice. Like a promise. Is it in the dark? <laughs> Lady Gaga reference, right? <laughs> I miss you. Love it. The actual synth print design and production is so good. It obviously has a strong reference to it, as I've said a million times, but it in itself is really, really nicely done, you know? I came back only wanting you. Ah, so sick. Oh, wow. I'd be really interested to hear all the different references that you guys hear as well. Please leave like a list in the comments of all the references that you've heard. I miss you. Is it wrong to now decide that I miss you? Nice. Interesting perspective. Not what I expected from the song Miss You, you know? Like, definitely got, like, a darker kind of 80 synthwave energy to it. But, like, the perspective is different. You know, it's like, I broke your heart and left you dancing in the dark. Is it wrong to now feel that I miss you? You know? I wonder whether maybe he's putting himself into the perspective of this other person that he's talked about in the past or maybe there is a new relationship situation where he's had to let somebody down, you know? Cool, interesting. Not my favourite so far. I feel like it kind of almost felt like it needed to go to an extra level, but the songwriting is still brilliant, you know? Now you know I'm a wicked man. I bit the hand that was feeding me, snapping back like a rubber band. The fear of love is my tendency. I don't know why. Is it wrong to now decide I miss you? Yeah, I love the kind of darkness in that, and he's keying into this, like, fear of being in love, which kind of stems from kind of past traumas, right? He's like, shit, I fucked up something that could have been really great because of my fear and my own anxiety. And that darkness really kind of like permeates through the whole song, despite kind of having the kind of 80s blinky blonky vibes. Really cool. Okay, let's go on to the next one. This is Bourgeoisies. Bourgeoisies. Nice. Hey. <laughs> Oh my god, what is- oh my god, I know this song. What's the reference? It's so clever. Every single song has a really strong reference. How British of you, Conan? <laughs> what is the reference? Oh my god, you're gonna have to tell me in the comments. Like, I know it. <laughs> nice. 
He's so clever in the way that he's taking these specific references and twisting them so you're like, I recognize it, but I don't know why. <laughs> it's really clever. Love that chromatic moment. Interesting. Very surprising little break. So fun. I want to be with the bourgeoisie. The bourgeoisie being like the the like posh kind of clientele type thing. It's really given me like 80s UK working class song, you know, where it's like somebody who's like, I want to see how the other half live kind of vibe. That's like totally what he seems to be keying into. Yeah, it's a real British energy to it. Not my favourite song though so far. I think like I enjoyed it. Clever reference that I cannot remember. It's really, maybe it's like Madness or something. But yeah, like I feel like the songwriting felt less Conan-y in that one. I feel like maybe that was leading maybe a little bit too hard into the, the reference. Whereas the other ones I felt like I've really balanced and walked the line between the really strong referencing and Conan's like own strong songwriting. The TV's on the woman's blonde. She talks and talks about how the rich are wrong. They cheat on wives, never pay the price. I'm a low class guy. That sounds pretty nice. I want to be with the bourgeoisies. I want to see how the bourgeoisies is party all night. It really is a working class song, huh? The woman on TV is kind of talking about how the rich are really bad, but he's like, well, I kind of actually want that kind of life. And it's that kind of perspective thing where it's like, if you're in that, you might like not understand like what you have, like the privilege that you have. And actually from a like working class perspective, having that privilege would be pretty damn good. You know, that's kind of what it's giving me. Really random though. I feel like Conan's never written a song like that and it's a bit of a strange one because um, it feels very British and he's very American. <laughs> yeah, very weird. Intriguing though. Um, let's go on to the next one. This is Forever With Me. Nice. Again, more, another, yeah, another Elton John ref. Enjoying it very much. Well, in this lifetime, we did it wrong. And after all this time Nice Memories Oh Reference to his previous song Oh, I love this I love the melodrama in here It's like a past love that's always going to be with you even when you've moved on, you're old and grey. It still had an effect on you, you know? Love it. For the reason that I cry mm. I'm smiling now as I sing oh. oh, so good. Oh my God. Oh, I got chills. I really, really like this. This is beautiful. Oh, classic ballad. <laughs> I love Conan's ballads. They're my favourite, to be honest. Oh. oh, now this is the 80s power ballad, isn't it? Oh, it's so sick. <laughs> Bloody key change as well. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I'm obsessed. Piano is beautiful. Really has given me Elton Johnny chords and stuff. With me. Beautiful. Fucking perfection. I loved that. <laughs> oh, what a good fucking song. Oh my God. I loved it so much. Like, Stone Cold classic immediately. Do you know what I mean? Like, so nicely written. Really keying into those, like, classic songwriting ballad chords you know using the the like m borrowed minor chord the key changes using the chromatic movements and stuff really beautiful flowing piano blowing up to 100 giving you that kind of 80s movie sheen on top of it telling you the super strong story that he's so good for i think your love is forever gonna stay with me oh just great really really good brings it all together so beautifully like the conan of it all the brilliant songwriting and lyrics and melodies and stuff with like this super strong concept and beautiful songwriting and beautiful like chord writing and songwriting you know that element of it as well it's like oh amazing <laughs> i love that i love that so much something i always forget to say at the beginning uh, people who are on my channel will know that we love to leave 
our top fives in the comments. So I ask of you, please tell me your top five songs from this album in the comment section. I love going through them. I'll be letting you know my favourite song at the end of the album. At the moment it's that one. Um, <laughs> Eye of the Night is the next song. <laughs> Come on. If you didn't know this was an 80s homage album, you do bloody now. Come on. <laughs> it's the thrill of the tiger. It's the eye of the night. Because <laughs> Wow. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> this one is the, probably the strongest ref so far. It has a stalking kind of energy, like a marching thing. Ooh, what's the voice? Love it. Oh, this is so fucking clever. I hear your heartbeat bleeding through the floor. That's so sick. Mm. So it's like a feeling of being haunted. That is so clever. I am so obsessed with how close it is, but how it's different, you know? Beers. Oh my god, the drums are sick. Key change. <laughs> that is just so genius. I'm kind of obsessed with it. That is Eye of the Tiger, right? No, it's not, is it? It's not, is it? Wait, what is it? You give love a bad name, right? I, this is the thing, is that it feels so strong when you're listening to it, the reference, but then you're like, wait a second, what song actually is that? And it's like, maybe it's like a combination of loads of different, I don't know. It's pretty fucking genius. I feel like so many songs he's managed to really successfully thread the needle and like make it so recognisable, but still completely his own thing. Thing is, I can imagine people being very cynical of like what he's done on this album, especially if they'd only heard a couple of songs. They're like, oh, you're just ripping off old songs. And it's like, sometimes you hear interpolations and they do feel like a complete rip off. Like what was the, the Rita Ora one? I can't remember which one it is now, but it really pissed me off. I mean, the Blue Abba Deeba Abba Die one is the same fucking song. Really like cashing out on people's nostalgia. I don't like it when it feels like a cash out, but this is like somebody who clearly has a love for 80s culture, for 80s movies, for 80s video games, really has an idea of what the 80s means to us, this thing that is 80s now. And he's like playing to that so hard, but it doesn't feel like a cash in because the songs are strong on their own. And it's, cl it's clear to me because it's an entire album and because it's an entire concept, he's managed to do not only the interpolation, but also make something that has its own artistic merit and is kind of better off for the kind of referencing and kind of creates this new level of kind of artistic interest. And this is the way to do interpolation and sampling. Beyonce is another one who is brilliant at taking interpolation, taking sampling and using it to create something new, like infusing it with a kind of artistic perspective by use, by like reworking classics into a modern context. Like that is an artistic perspective. Artists who, like physical artists, use all sorts of mediums, whether it's oil to canvas or whether it's reusing like recyclable materials, like picking up bits of metal off the street and making art out of that. That's what I'm getting from this. It's like picking up pieces of metal from the street and making artwork that has the previous artwork in it, but is reformed into something new and something interesting. You know, it's like the Coke can purse, you know, all the kind of like references of an iconography, the American Coca-Cola can is buried into this design. It's kind of got the Andy Warhol kind of vibe thing. Do you know what I mean? It's like reworking old iconography into new iconography. And that's what he's doing just in a music way. And I think it's really cool. And actually the artwork's very Andy Warhol. Maybe that's the whole point. Maybe I've just keyed into this, even though I'm not necessarily big on my like art art. I am big on my music. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's my lecture on how clever this is. <laughs> and anyone who's, who can be critical, you can send them to this video and uh, tell them to listen to this section um, so that they understand the genius of Conan Gray. I'm walking to your corner. I see you in the street. You're here. You're haunting me. The eye of the night. The eye of the night represents this, like ghost that is like hanging over him, you know, even in the dark. He's like, I feel like I'm being watched, you know. I always feel like I'm not alone while I'm walking down these empty roads. I feel like I'm not alone. I hear a voice that tells me where to go. 
I grab the keys, scramble to the door, and I hear your heartbeat bleeding through the floor. The memories I cannot ignore fight for my life in, in, inside a silent war. More playing into this idea that he can't go with this person, this, the, the love that he had is that haunting him and not letting him go. Like, contextualising it in, like, a kind of horror movie vibe. Like, love that. Again, 80s horror movies. It's like, uh, it's just really clever. Cool. Next song. <laughs> this is Boys and Girls. Okay. Nice. He wants you, she wants you, like everyone else in your life. <laughs> that, oh, is that a Pet Shop Boys reference? Yeah, this is really giving Pet Shop Boys, isn't it? You've got a face as technologic. I want you to need me, I want you to love me. It's this kind of everybody else loves you. The person that's like so magnetic that everybody wants them. They're lost within their own orbit type thing. Mm. I just love how hard he's lent into this theme. I love a concept album that has real cohesion. And he's like, you want fucking cohesion? I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> For me, it really takes balls to like basically rework your entire style for the sole purpose of creating a concept album. It's like, it does take a lot of balls. That cool ending. Sorry, I'm talking it's all the way through it. Enjoyed that. I enjoyed the vibes. I felt like the hook wasn't as strong as some of them. Cherry hair, so super Bowie. Okay, so he's literally referencing Bowie. Kiss me, but swear she doesn't know me. You wouldn't care if I fell over and died. <laughs> sigh, I'm not the only. Sigh, I'm not the only. He wants you, he wants you, he doesn't even see me. She wants you, she wants you, there's no point in competing. He wants you, she wants you, like everyone else in your life. That's right, boys and girls, they want you. Fathers and daughters, all their pants dropping. <laughs> I'm not being ironic. Wow, okay, that's that's a bit cutting, isn't it? So there's a sense of like, this person is so, yeah, so magnetic that like everybody in their life wants them. Someone who is that hot, they know it. Now I'm a bit older, I kind of notice this a bit more, but like there are people who are so hot and they know that they're really hot and you just can't touch it. Like when I was younger, I used to think, I don't think, oh my God, I want to be with that person. But then you realise that they know that they're really hot and they're a dick. <laughs> and that's really giving, that's really what the song is giving me. It's like everybody wants you and you know it. It's really killing me, you know. Oh no, that's the next song. <laughs> Let's go on to the next song. This is killing me. <laughs> it's 2 a.m. Cellular ringing. God, I love you bad. Ooh, love us in. I worship every moment we meet. So mm. Cool. Nice. Oh. Dun dun. <laughs> I love it. Unafraid to reference or not reference. Sorry, just thought of that. <laughs> mm. I like, that's the imagery, like the 80s movie imagery again, throwing stones at the door, you know, at the window. <laughs> I just love it. The drama is so sick. <laughs> it's like, I want to get over this, but you're still like trying to string me along and it's killing me. <laughs> Barely. That's <laughs> great. Ooh, 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 ooh. See, that's so 80s horror movie, isn't it? Like, love chromatic descent there, really giving it character. That's <laughs> so sick. You're killing me. <laughs> Great. More than an 80s homage, this album is an 80s movie homage. And that one really is giving me the horror movie vibes again. Like, I really love how he's playing with that, you know? Really cool. The hook is just so sick. You're killing me. It's just so dramatic. And so, like, it's he's really keyed into the kind of earnest feeling that the 80s is all about for me. Not worrying about being cool. Not worrying about being cheesy just kind of leaning into what you think sounds good and being really honest about it. That is really like the key thing that's pulling it all together for me. 2 a.m. I hear the cellular ringing, but sadly I worship every moment we meet. So you take and you take because you know that you can. And I chase as you're chasing another man. Tried to break, I see your face. I know that you can't. Oh, you're killing me. So there's a sense of like being addicted to this bad person still. 
Um, so similar kind of storyline. I do kind of feel like I'm excited to, for more things to happen in his life. Um, <laughs> Cause like a lot of the songs have the same theme, but yes, as I said, like I really love where he's gone like artistically with the style and with the concept vibe of the album. It's really clever. Before we go into the final song, this is a quick shout out to my patrons. All the names coming up on screen now. Thank you so much for everybody who supports me over on Patreon. You make it possible for me to live my artistic lifestyle doing all these all this stuff, talk about music for a living. It's great. If you want to join over on Patreon, you can actually get all of my videos unedited. In the upper tiers, you also get to request songs or albums from me to react to as well, which all appear for everybody. So you get a whole bunch of bonus content too. And you even get extended and video versions of my podcast as well. So there's lots going on on there. But yeah, it's an exciting place to be a part of. And there's loads of like-minded individuals over there. So uh, yes, head over now. Links in the description. Thanks, guys. Last song, this is Winner, which is a cool song to end the album on. Let's go. Packed my bags of 14 leaving, mm. but you Ending with a ballad. The pots and pans and roaches <laughs> shudder at your name. You don't really want to hear the truth, do you? Very beautiful control of his voice. You gotta lie to do it. There's no his voice sounds perfect on this. Now you really are the winner. Wow, there it is. There's the Queen reference again, huh? Take a bow, cause you're the winner. You're the winner. Mm. A uh, bitter feeling, like, go on, you fucking won. Bleeding in the palm of your hand. When you're the one, oh. Ah, oh, yes. God, it really just whips you up, doesn't it? Like, I love the kind of, like, dynamic shifting. Like, it really kind of has, like, cartoon kind of energy to it. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh. Oh, it's so queen. I love it. <laughs> this is a great way to end the album. It really is just so clever. Do you? Mm, love it. Yeah, really good. I really enjoyed that. Love a Queen reference. I'm a big fan of Queen. My dad is like the biggest Queen fan. We did an episode of the podcast on Queen and I learned a lot during that episode and I really like gave me like a new found respect for Queen, specifically Brian May, actually. This one really, like I really enjoyed the the, the obvious Queen references in the same way that I've enjoyed the rest of the song. It's the rest of the album. It kind of has such a strong reference that really takes you there, but is a strong enough song on its own right to kind of hold its own. I do feel like he has written better ballads. I must say that like I really enjoyed it, but I feel like Astronomy still hasn't been beaten for me, but that is a fucking brilliant, like, Astronomy is like one of the best songs. So, um, that's gonna be hard for him to beat for me, but whatever. Um, still really loved it. And I love that he ended the album with that strong, like, power rock moment. It was kind of like the last piece in the puzzle of the kind of full 80s homage. Packed my bags at 14, hadn't planned on leaving, but you haven't been back home for days. The pots and pans and roaches, they're glad I'm finally going. Because even them, they shudder at your name. The only thing you've proven is that there's no one who has ever done it better at making me feel worse. Now you really are the winner. This is really giving me like, I don't know about his family situation, but like this is giving me like a parent leaving. Bask inside your victory, my heart that once was beating, bleeding in the palm of your hand. How do I somehow feel guilty when you're the one who let it get this bad? Yeah, it's giving me like a broken down relationship with a parent, like somebody who walked out and like, he's kind of like, you ended up having everything you wanted. You ended up the winner in this situation, whereas I ended up the one who's like left with the kind of trauma of it, you know, who at 14 kind of had to grow up really quick. Yeah, really powerful stuff. Really like that. Yeah, so overall, I feel like a few ups and downs, like some of the songs weren't like my favourite, but I feel like that's always the way with current albums is that like, there are some of them I adore and some of them are kind of like mm, mixed on. But I would say overall, I think the album is so strong. I think he's really, really successfully done what he set out to do, which is create this big homage to the kind of veneer of 80s Hollywood kind of vibes. He's poked it full of clever references, audio references, lyrical references. He like sets up one reference and then actually surprises you with a different one. For me, like there is art in using 
old material and refiguring it into something new. And he's proven that because so many of the songs, despite the strong reference, are so strong on their own. You know, I just think it's very, very, very clever and very postmodern. As they say, um, maybe he listened to maybe he listened to Renaissance and thought, "I'm going to do my own version of that, turn interpolation into my own art form." You know, I feel like I have even more respect for him as an artist because I've always known he's been a really brilliant singer, a really br- brilliant lyricist and melody writer, and have a real quirky sense about him. But this one, this album, is showing me that he has vision as well. You know. Whereas the previous two albums didn't necessarily kind of come together under one umbrella of a vision. This one completely does and really like nails it in terms of the style and everything. The lyrical references, the musical references, the production references, the visual references. It's like all plays together beautifully. And uh, yeah, it's really, really, really good. What am I going to say my favourite song was? Um, yes, I'm go- Okay, so I'm going to say my favourite song on the album was forever with me for me that one really just came together as a song in its own right and it's such a strong beautiful way had the strong referencing but really was just a classic classic brilliantly written ballad from conan and just like it really all came together in that moment for me and i just love it let me know what your top five was in the comments thank you for joining me on this video if you want to check out my super eight reaction it is here and if you want to check out my kid crow reaction it is here